Over the last couple of years, I've done quite a few side-by-side -side comparisons, and of course, the Lamarzoco GS3 MP has made many appearances up against a wide variety of other espresso machines, but today's matchup is a little bit different. And that's because the decent DE1 XL is a different kind of machine, and I think it's fair to say that that's pretty evident just by looking at it. I mean, instead of side panels, it's got a case. Instead of standard boilers, it's got a thermal coil, and instead of a paddle, it's got a tablet. But on the flip side, both the Lamarzoco GS3 MP and Decent DE1 XL are designed around the user being in control. But the way each machine approaches and achieves that control is essentially on the opposite sides of the spectrum. And it's that blatant in-your-face contrast that makes this comparison both so difficult to produce, but also pretty interesting to try to illustrate. But beyond their obvious differences, they're both highly sought-after pieces of home espresso gear, and have already proven themselves formidable contenders for any home barista's counter space. So as I often do in these comparisons, I'll be going over each machine, talking about their build, their design, and their performance, and of course doing a good old-fashioned blind tasting. But before we get into all that coffee craziness, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Standart Magazine. If you're into coffee, its culture, and learning about the world around it, Standart Magazine is the perfect addition to your brew bar or coffee table. With quarterly releases, they shed light on issues both inside and outside of the cafe, highlighting people who elevate the industry, and deep dives into new ideas around all things coffee. To sweeten the deal, each issue also includes a sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters, to give you the full sensory experience. You really can't beat the combination of fresh coffee and fresh print. So head on over to standartmag.com slash Prometheus, use the link in the description or codes Prometheus at checkout to snag $5 off your very own subscription of Coffee & Culture, shipped direct to your door nearly anywhere in the world with a money back guarantee. And if you're still on the fence, you can actually try Standart today for just the cost of shipping. There's not much to lose and a whole lot to gain. Now, it doesn't really take an extremely keen observer to look at these two machines, the Decent DE1 XL and the Lamarzoco GS3 MP, to realize that they really reflect a very different approach to espresso machine aesthetics, functionality, and user experience. The Lamarzoco GS3 is clearly rooted in Italian tradition and brand heritage, and it blends pretty seamlessly the rich history of Italian espresso culture and mechanical functionality. The machine itself features a stainless steel body, retro-inspired panels, analog gauges, and iconic paddle controls, which pay homage to traditional espresso machines. But the GS3's classic appearance still maintains a minimalist aesthetic and an intuitive user experience, which every aspect of its design serves a functional purpose. And in comparison, the decent DE1 XL really does embody a more tech-focused, modern approach to espresso machine design. To me, its slightly boxy look more closely resembles a computer than an espresso machine, but there's no doubt it delivers a more contemporary aesthetic. And of course, the touchscreen and gaming PC-esque RGB lighting does a little legwork on that too. But its unique technology that's designed to deliver unprecedented control over the brewing process also comes with a learning curve, because its controls aren't quite as straightforward at a glance, and requires a little bit more tech savviness. Beyond their aesthetics, which absolutely do create a very stark contrast, their brewing philosophies are actually surprisingly similar, but as I mentioned earlier, the way that's achieved is where they deviate again. I mean, for example, both machines are designed to provide accurate and stable brew temperatures. But the GS3 does it using more traditional means, a large 1.3 liter stainless and insulated boiler. The Decent does it with two pumps, hot and cold. The hot runs through a small thermal coil heater that shoots past the requested temperature and then it blends with cold water and preheated water through a manifold to achieve the accurate temperature at the group. And speaking of accurate temperatures and brew groups, both machines also have actively heated group heads. The GS3, of course, has the famous low-tech and highly effective saturated group, or Grupo Saturo, hence the GS title, which means it's an extension of the brew boiler itself and is filled with water at the same temperature. The Decent's group head, though, utilizes again a more technical design, using a fiberglass insulator and cartridge heaters aimed at only heating the water path, not the entire group assembly. In terms of brew pressure, both machines are also capable across a wide range, but again they differ from not only the point of creation, but also to how they're controlled. The Lamarzoco produces its brew pressure using a commercial grade rotary pump, and its pressure application to the coffee is done mechanically, using a paddle connected to a conical valve that controls the water flow into the group, which either decreases or increases the pressure applied to the coffee. 
but the Decent, as you maybe expect by now and should probably just get used to, again comes in just a little more technical because they want to very accurately control the temperature, flow, and pressure. So they use vibration pumps that engage quickly and efficiently as they move heat and pressurize small amounts of water throughout the system. And of course, controlling all these variables requires a pretty extensive user interface, and that's where the tablet comes into play. It allows you not only to manage your brews, but to more so micromanage them. And finally, let's talk about Steam. And much like its brewing program, the GS3 comes at Steam with sheer brute force. It uses a large 3.5 liter boiler, and to be completely honest, the power and consistency behind it is nothing short of commercial grade. And the time it takes to texture your average amount of milk, let's say 8 to 10 ounces, is often less than 30 seconds. The Decent obviously isn't nearly as intense, but it is quite a bit better than I expected. Similar to its brewing mechanisms, the water for steam is flash heated to 160 degrees Celsius or 320 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 60 degrees Fahrenheit higher than what I set my GS3 to. So it's not really lacking in terms of pressure, even on the 110 volt, but it does take about double or triple the time for the same volumes than the GS3. As you can likely imagine considering the vast differences in design between the Decent and the GS3, it does lead to a unique set of limitations and advantages for each platform. For instance, the GS3 and its use of large boilers means it'll perform well at high volumes, as it relies on brute force to get things done. But on the flip side, the sheer volume of water sitting in those boilers, a total of 3.5 liters, which requires constant power to maintain temperature, makes it quite a bit less energy efficient than the Decent which uses a small thermocoil to only heat the water that's going to be used, essentially in real time. Also, the use of the paddle on the GS3 leads to a more active tactile experience when it comes to profiling your espresso, from pre-infusion to ramp down. But with the paddle being the only option for brewing, its repeatability and shot-to-shot -shot consistency relies on you. And I hate to say it, but you're unreliable. But the Decent, utilizing its software, can push back-to-back -back shots very well and without the guesswork but you do lose the ability to make on-the-fly adjustments. And while we're on the topic of reliability, the GS3's limited electronics and more traditional mechanical internals makes for simpler repairs and replacements, at least in my experience. But the Decent, on the other hand, utilizes a lot of interconnected technology that works well at 100%, but does have a ton of possible failure points. And honestly, working on it gives me a little bit of anxiety. And of course, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but I think the through line of this section and one that I didn't even really realize until I sat down and thought of this stuff out is that these machines, at least in terms of their advantages and limitations, seem to be the inverse of one another. Now with all that comparing and contrasting out of the way, let's dig into the one thing they're both designed to produce, espresso. Of course, it's not like either of these machines are new to the market, and you can find near endless opinions about the espresso that they make. But as always, when it comes to side-by-side -side comparisons of espresso machines, a blind tasting is a great way to determine how and where they might differ. So as usual, I've invited a friend to join me, and today Siri from Lofty Coffee, a full-time coffee pro, is here to dial in some coffee and pull me some shots. And after a quick crash course on the decent controls, a breakdown of the GS3 Mimic profile I put together, and aligning the machine settings, I left her to it, and waited in the other room. But not long after, I had some shots ready for tasting. The coffee brewed was the Keeping It Classy Espresso Blend, also roasted by Siri, which consists of washed coffees from Costa Rica and Guatemala. As expected, the shots themselves were extremely similar in terms of their general flavors, with notes of chocolate, citrus, and caramel really standing out. But the main difference between the two, and it was subtle, but it was the clarity. The lighter cup just tasted more nuanced, where each flavor sort of stood out on its own, but the darker cup, those notes tended to blur or muddle some. So in the end, the shot I ended up choosing was from the Decent. And in terms of why, that's sort of up for debate, but I'd venture a guess that even with the shots themselves being less than 2 grams of yield and 3 seconds of shot time different, including a pretty strict pressure phase profile from pre-infusion to ramp down, 
there has to be something to the accurate and limited flow rate, smooth but fast pressure adjustments, and very consistent brew temperature that carries the decent over the finish line, at least in this one singular circumstance. But regardless of the shot outcome, I do think it should be said that trying to align profiles between machines is a bit of a one-way street. And by that I mean it's easier to set up the decent to mimic the GS3 than the other way around. And honestly, trying to do that does leave a lot of the decent's capabilities on the table, which does feel like a little bit of a waste considering the machine's level of control. In the end, I feel like the point that's driven home with this video is that these two machines both feel like they're almost nearly on opposite sides of the brewing spectrum in almost every way, except one, good espresso. With the GS3 bringing in the traditional tactile, hands-on and self-reliant side with lots of metal, brass and brute force. Or the DE1XL with a more modern, data-driven, pre-planned and fly-by-wire angle with a focus on software over hardware. Though I would also argue that comparing these two machines is less about the espresso and more about your personal brewing philosophy and how you want to approach it. Of course, there is no right or wrong answer here because much like espresso machines, not all coffee enthusiasts are built the same. But on that note, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up and as always, pass the conversation on to you. So what are your thoughts on the GS3 versus the Decent and which one would you prefer and why? I'd love to know your reasoning on that and see which direction my audience leans for future videos and potential machines that are gonna be landing on this bar. So drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for early content access. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.